trip from Rigel 3 to Earth just to drop back. Come on, baby! Computer. everyone welcome back to another fun-filled podcast adventure hooray my name is midnight mike uh, joe is not here cratchit is not here but steve he is here yay steve from am wake up which is the show i do frequently and uh slow news day thank you for joining me Absolutely, my friend. Thank you for having me on. It's awesome to be here. One of my favorite shows in the world. We've done a lot of uh, morning AM wake-ups together. Uh, thank you for inviting me on that show. Always have a good time doing it. Uh, how's Pasta doing? I got to know before. Oh, he's doing great. He's about to go on the road uh, following around various candidates, mostly RFK Jr., a little bit of Cornell West. He's going to be putting microphones in faces and I, I I think perhaps upsetting some people while making other people very happy. That's so, awesome. That's exactly yeah. what I want to see. <laughs> I like pasta and I haven't talked to him in a while. So it's good he's being productive and actually doing what uh, he likes doing, which is uh, challenging people and upsetting people. Yeah, I saw he's kind of got a, a thing going with Cornell West. So hopefully that remains productive, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Well, and kudos to him for deciding to pick a fight with an octogenarian black man. Yeah. Hey, yeah. can't go wrong there. Right. <laughs> well, hey, everyone. No uh, it is Wednesday. We got a lot of things on the docket. So here's my uh, here's my plan. I don't know if we're going to be able to get to everything, but I want to talk, talk about uh, UFOs a little bit, but mostly uh, alien abductions in my lab's military abductions. We got Biden stuff to cover, uh, strange news. I ideally would like to open up the phone lines on a very special Wednesday because maybe people out there would have uh, something to contribute. That's the plan. But it is uh, Wednesday, and we start off Wednesdays with Alex Jones, Clips of the Week. Yes, we do. And uh, Alex was... Uh, Doing the rounds, uh, he was in Florida. I believe he was uh, he was uh, he's, was doing things in Florida for a long time, and uh, I think he's he's back in the studio. But the first two clips I have here, he I believe he's still in Florida. This is from Thursday, the 29th. Here we go. He's about to have an orgasm. He's gonna be dead in about 30 seconds. I'm gonna slit his throat. I'm gonna stab him in the chest. I can't read any of this right now. That's part of my frustration on air too. Like I have to like, wait, I used to be able to read this. Read it. I should be able to say the N word. I'm really good <laughs> at killing people. She looks like one of those goblins from uh, Harry Potter. It's okay. It's like, well, you look like a goblin. We gotta let you kill us. Well, if I don't just pistol whip this person and take their car and shoot them in a ditch, somebody else will do it. There you go. The goblin. Oh man. You got got well, some goblin clips in there. That's and that's also a fair point about the pistol whipping mm -hmm. uh, and leaving in a ditch. That's the, yeah, if, inarguably accurate. If he's not going to do it, someone else will do that. The goblin. Uh, then we have a short one from Friday. Friday, uh, I believe he had Roseanne Barr was on uh, the show. Actually, I Roseanne believe Roseanne making the rounds. Yeah, yeah. Um, Roseanne was actually, I believe, in the Infowar studio. So Roseanne, I believe, was. I, I first uh, knew that she was making the podcast underground uh, rounds, I would say about almost two years ago. Uh, I saw her on a show, quite frankly. I love I love Frank out of New York. He's a good dude. And somehow he wrangled uh, Roseanne to come on a show, and they became very friendly. And she's pretty outspoken about all these kind of topics and issues um, since she's been basically blacklisted from Hollywood. 
so yeah. she's, she's making the rounds. I didn't get a chance to listen to the interview that she did with Jones. That's uh, maybe I'll listen to that tonight as I drift off to sleep. But here's a uh, seven seconds from Friday the thirtieth. Kill all the Jews. No Jews died. No one died in the Holocaust, and the six million Jews should die. <laughs> okay, that's. I think I think those are taken out of context. Perhaps a little, perhaps a little out of context there, as was Roseanne's statement originally in the first place. Yeah, uh, you know, I, I don't think uh, Alex Jones actually believes that. He may be taking some things out of context, but we don't know. Yeah, yeah nor do I think Roseanne is, is just waiting around for her chance to go a slaughtering. Uh, however, we we you know catch her on an off day, and and maybe maybe she does believe that. Yeah, yeah, people have bad days. They do. Stalin they do. had a few bad days. Stalin definitely had a few bad days. Pol Pot, notorious yeah. for having a really bad week. Always waking up on the wrong side of the bed. Uh, right. That, that guy. <laughs> uh, but the right side of the killing fields yeah. is, is, yeah. So, something to be said for that. Well, here's uh, Alex Jones. He's back in a big way. Monday, uh, July 3rd. Here we go. Good for Joe. Half the transgenders are mentally retarded. Ladies and gentlemen, good luck. We've done as much as we can. Prepare yourselves. It's already irreversible. Goodbye. Pride Month spells demon. That's why I got mad at Joe about six years ago and blew up at him on air and said, I'm not going to put up with this. Uh, the <laughs> alien craft are there. They just blew up New York City. The people that come to fix your toaster when this all goes down and to fix your leaky roof, wherever that is in the future, are going to slit your throats. Can run on for a long time. Run on for a long time. But sooner or later, God's going to cut you down. There you go. Doing a little uh, Johnny Cash at the end there. Without a single apology to the family or estate of Johnny Cash. Yeah. I thought Jones could carry a tune better than that. Uh, I thought so, too. I, I you know, he, he can do uh, Danzig pretty well. Uh, I think he, he's got his tenor. He's got his wheelhouse. But uh, Johnny Cash is not one of them. And then the last clip here, last montage is from today. Here we go. Biden is one step away from finger painting in his own feces on the walls. I don't, I've got more hookers to have sex with. I, I don't care. Joe, great to have you here with us. Joe, out of necessity now, understands how serious things are and has taken the gloves off. Joe, thank you so much. He snorts some more cocaine. When he gets mad, he poops his pants. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, a lot of uh, animals in the in the primate kingdom uh, poop their Oh, well, poop themselves when they're mad. Uh, I don't know if they. I don't think many primates besides us have uh, pants. So that's true. Not that's that I know. Of. Right. However, if you were to fashion a pair of goat pants, you would imagine that they would be frequently filled. Oh yeah, that thing would be demolished within the first five minutes of putting those things on. I have goats here. They don't like pants. They don't like them. They don't like wearing them. No. Uh, so there's our Alex Jones uh, clips of the week. We will transition out of here and talk about some other things. Here we go. So UFO mania is still gripping Washington, D.C., and it's kind of trickling out into some of the mainstream media. And... Uh, People are trying to make heads or tails. What What is going on? I follow a, a lot of UFO people on Twitter. I, I follow the, the really deep in the, the UFO waters. And then I follow people like Mick West and some people that are more skeptical um, when it comes to the, the, this, the entire phenomenon. I want to get every side of this discussion that I possibly can. So maybe I can get some approximation of, of what's going on. And then I, I follow I, I found this Twitter uh, this uh, this tweet and it led to this uh, um, this article about uh, Jimmy Carter and Jimmy Carter for people who do not know he was the president of the United States of America from I believe 1977 to right around 1980 you know there's that crossover time there and uh, Jimmy Carter had a UFO experience a UFO sighting. And he tried to go digging to to see what he could find out about UFOs. Now, Jimmy Carter, just a just a, a, a salt of the earth peanut farmer from Georgia. Correct me if I'm saying anything wrong here, Steve, about Jimmy Carter. So far, this 100 percent checks out, my friend. Yeah, 
That's this is what I know about Jimmy. It, it, uh, you know, Sunday school teacher too. Was he really? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah, I know he's a he was a, a religious man, um, as most presidents claim to be. But I, I actually believe Jimmy Carter was uh, a religious man. And so, in relation to the UFO topic, uh, Jimmy uh, Jimmy Carter did see a UFO, and he tried to get to the bottom of what was going on. After all, he was the president of the United States. You would imagine he would have some authority, some ability to figure out what the heck's going on around here. Well, according now, according to some rumors and sources who claim to have first or second hand hand knowledge of what Jimmy Carter learned. Uh, initially, he was told by the CIA, Jimmy Carter was told by the CIA to go pound sand. You're, you're, bar you're barking at the wrong tree. You don't got, you don't got permission to know what we know, but he did wind up uh, pressing the issue, um, as most presidents should do. Um, and, uh, this is, uh, this is the rumored result of that. So according to Ed Harris, and I don't know if, I don't know if this means Ed Harris, the actor, Ed Harris. But I would believe you would that. hope so. But according to the tweet, it says former research associate at NASA Ames Research Center, 1988 to 1991. Uh, so unless uh, Ed Harris, beloved movie actor, had a side gig that I was unaware of. Well, Ed Harris did work at NASA in the movie Apollo 13. OK, so well, now I think we're on to something. Or it could be there. But according to Ed Harris, actor, um, this is why President Carter cried after his UFO briefing. Yes, the incident of Jimmy Carter crying after being briefed about classified information regarding UFOs is largely believed to be true, but the serious researchers on this, uh, uh, by the serious researchers on the subject. As a forewarning, the following information is very unsettling and will explain why Carter never kept his promise of revealing classified UFO information to the public. According to the story... That was corroborated by more than one witness. U.S. president, U.S. presidents are only giving a cursory overview of the subject, the UFO subject. Apparently, the CIA runs a program, only provide information to presidents on a need-to-know basis, and do not consider presidential curiosity a sufficient need to know. This was implemented after Kennedy, and all presidents after him have been given only a summary, a summary briefing. briefing uh, some presidents are unknown. Some pre some presidents, for unknown reasons, were given more than others. Uh, okay, as uh, onto your question, President Carter is a deeply religious man who also had uh, witnessed a UFO with six other people. Everyone thought that he would be uh, he would be the one to finally release UFO information to the public, as the story goes. But he was uh, reportedly stonewalled. Eventually, the CIA had the talk with him. And afterwards, it's reported that he sunk his head in his hands and not only began to deeply sob, but was visibly disturbed for some weeks afterwards. So what was he told or what was he shown? Uh, he was told that the major religions, including Christianity, were programs created by extraterrestrials to prevent us from destroying ourselves while they ran their experiments on us. And that they and that they the aliens made us humans. At this moment, it became clear that to Carter that such information could cause tremendous economic and social upheaval. And I should add that I am only a Christian. I am not only a Christian but a clergyman. So I am in no way attempting to promote atheism here. In fact, how God uh, fits into uh, this might be an interesting separate post. Nevertheless, these are the facts as I know them to be. So, um, interesting little tidbit right there as to why there might be all this secrecy around UFOs and why they've gone to such great lengths. They, the, I guess the, uh, the, the government inside the government, uh, mm -hmm. have gone to such great lengths to keep this a secret because that would be very, uh, disconcerting to realize that, uh, we are just a product of an experiment and that uh, our potential is very limited. It might be gut-wrenching. It might be a blow to our human ego. Maybe it would cause us to not want to explore. Or maybe that this really is a prison planet that we're not allowed to escape from. Um, that would be very demoralizing, wouldn't you think? Yeah. 
It, it would be, but it would go a long way to explain uh, at least most TV and film for the last 30 years. It, it would. I do. Or at least the uh, inherent, I don't know, the the constant, like, rewarding of the absolute worst people, the, the way that people fall up into these positions of, of power. It does seem like if you were the architect of some sort of mass scale social experiment and you were doing it from perhaps a, a malevolent or let's see what happens when we throw this at these guys point of view. The, then maybe it would be conducted like it. I know I'm not saying that that's all not disheartening. You, you, you know what I mean? However, there, there is a lot of, um, there's a lot you can do with a full set of answers, much more so than you can do with an incomplete set of answers. So at least we'd be working with that. That, I mean, that is true. You, I guess, would you rather know the truth or live in blissful ignorance? And I, I think some people, uh, maybe they would prefer the blissful ignorance, and maybe that's what, if this Carter story is true, the CIA is is thinking of the public. Let them live in blissful ignorance. Let them believe that there uh, are UFOs and they're here to help us and feed them a bunch of disinfo, but in reality, uh, we know that uh, we're just products of an experiment and all major religions are, are BS. Um, and I think a lot of people have come to the conclusion that, oh, the major religions have been tinkered with and toyed with, edited and, and massaged throughout the, the, the generations. So, I mean, that's no big surprise there. But, yeah, well, and, and I mean, the institutions themselves haven't done a lot to keep their own credibility in terms of who, you know. So it's a, a not that hard of an argument to make from that perspective. No. Um, and it, this what uh, the Carter explanation runs counter to what Stephen Greer and his disclosure project promotes, which is the aliens are here and they're all good. They're all uh, looking out for our best interest and all the nefarious bad things are the product of the government. And so, I mean, it kind of runs counter to that. So there's two couple of different narratives there. Mm. Now, I, I would understand the reason for the UFO secrecy uh, if uh, the Carter story is, in fact, correct. Uh, but there could be another explanation as to why they want to keep the secrecy beyond the technology, beyond the uh, world-shaking uh, technology that could be harvested and implemented. Beyond that, there could be something a little bit more nefarious and dark to this, and that could be that the military or at least clandestine groups within the military and Pentagon could be responsible for some uh, pretty criminal acts in relation to the UFO phenomenon. Now, we've all well, heard... The, I'm sorry, sorry go, oh, ahead. go ahead. No, it's sad. I mean, the, 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 you're absolutely correct there, and I'm, I, it sounds like you're about ready to rattle off a number of examples of that, and I'm all ears, buddy. Well, we all know about stories of alien abductions, and I, I've gone over... A number of them on the shows, like there's so many, and they all wild vary. Right? Like there are similarities, but they, they 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 have their lane, but they all have different varying kind of elements to them. Typically, like an alien abduction will include uh, elements of interest around reproduction, uh, sex. The aliens oftentimes will give a message to the human ranging for uh, like uh, a prediction for the future that for the most part does not come true. And then a warning about uh, the use of atomic weapons and nuclear, uh, nuclear energy or a warning about the environment. Some sort of message is given to the human and uh, then they're sent about uh, their way to live their life. And then sometimes they get repeatedly abducted over and over again. But there are uh, people and researchers that have looked at some of these abductions and wondered if they were not all entirely true or some were done by the military themselves. And these are called My Labs. Now, I picked up this book. Um, this is just a, a brief like uh, overview of My Labs. It's called uh, My Labs, Military Mind Control and Alien Abduction. And everything in here is sourced. Now, this is written over 20 years ago at this point. 
over 20 years ago. The The copyright date is 1999. Ooh. And uh, what's fascinating about what's going on, like, in the like UFO news right now, like, all the stuff that they're talking about in the, like, the Senate and the, the UFO UAP committees, pretty much all these stories we've heard, like, that's like 40-year-old news. <laughs> like, that's, it's not new stuff to people who have paid attention to uh, the phenomenon. What they're not talking about is alien abductions. And uh, it could be because the, there's a, a couple of different groups responsible. So when it comes to uh, alien abductions or my labs, there's a couple of different ways we can look at this. That the abductees, uh, they're crazy and, and or they're making up these stories for attention. Uh, two, uh, there really are alien abductions and people are being taken. Or And three, uh, humans could also be behind the alien abductions, and maybe they're masquerading as aliens to cover their footsteps. So, I mean, we got we look at those uh, those possibilities. So, when it comes to what is being gleaned from these abductions, whether or not they're alien or or military or human, doesn't really matter. So, what what is being gleaned? Well, there appears to be three different groups that are doing and collecting different types of things when it comes to these abductions. Group one seems to be interested in the human mind and behavior. They want to uh, understand the human mind and control human behavior through experiments. Abductees have reported um, sensory deprivation experiments. Also, experiments in being forced into breathe liquid and also electromagnetic stimulation of their brain and uh, brain implants as well. We've all heard of alien implants. Um, so that's kind of like the, the one that kind of stuck out to me when reading this book was liquid breathing. Um, I didn't really hear a lot of uh, that or read a lot about um, alien abductees being forced to breathe liquid, but apparently that is a thing. Uh, group two seems to be interested in biological and genetic research. Uh, abductees recall seeing humans in tubes uh, filled with liquid and genetically altered animals in cages. Uh, this appears to be a common theme. And even within alien abductions, oftentimes you have a person saying, well, they, they took my sperm, they took my eggs, they, they, they forced me to have sex with an alien and vice versa. Very common in the uh, abductee story. And then group three, uh, this group appears to be a military task force interested in the UFO alien abduction phenomenon uh, for the purposes of collecting information from alien abductees. So they'll, they'll, they're basically the cleanup team. Let's say I get abducted tonight. Well, then tomorrow night, uh, group three, the military task force comes by, picks me up, interrogates me to see what the aliens told me and see if they can get any information out of me about the, the motives, tech, and uh, uh, just the overall disposition of the aliens. Those are the three groups right there. And this is all this all all this kind of my lab stuff really started to pick up after Project Paperclip. And uh, the CIA really started getting going. So you, with the CIA, you had uh, Project Chatter. Uh, Project Chatter was the United States Navy program uh, focusing on uh, using drugs for interrogation. You know, so this is where they really started to get their their foothold in using psychedelics, uh, all these weird things to try to alter the mind. Then you have CIA programs, a bluebird that turned into artichoke, which was a mind control program, um, and uh, also. It's all all kind of got woven together and got rolled into MK Ultra and then became MK Search, and that happened pretty much through uh, fifty three to sixty three. A lot of stuff got declassified, but all these weird kind of uh, focuses on controlling human behavior, altering their mind, and uh, trying to brainwash people is not unlike what has happened with the alien abduction phenomenon. Because when people get abducted by aliens, 
They, they're going through an extraordinarily traumatic situation. Uh, oftentimes, the abductees, they have missing time. They black out. They can't remember everything that happened to them. A message is implanted in them. They have to go through a hypnotic regression to recall any sort of detail. And they recall like uh, weird people, people in like aliens, or they oftentimes recall people in military outfits as well, or being taken to an underground bunker or underground base. Um, a, a mixture of humans and aliens working together in some capacity. At least that's how they remember that. Now, according to the book, um, uh, the military, when they do these abductions as basically a, a cleanup operation, they're trying to figure out, okay, why was the person originally abducted? And by the way, when we got him here, let's run our own experiments on him. <laughs> so, so we can use all of our MK Ultra uh, research on these people. Uh, not only did the maybe the aliens kind of wipe their mind, but after we got done abducting them, we got to wipe their mind too so they don't come sue us. Um, and there's many examples of people that are, are really just abducted over and over again. And they're being interrogated for information, and they don't really have any useful information uh, to give the mili- uh, their captors, who are, by all accounts, military. Uh, but then they're just being uh, basically abused over and over again because for whatever reason, this, this UFO phenomenon has got them so worked up that they're willing to sacrifice the lives of United States citizens, and probably citizens all across the globe, to get this little piece of knowledge it's bizarre it is really bizarre and but if so let's put all of that into context with the you know the carter disclosure here if if it's uh a cleanup crew but it's also you know if it's the cleanup crew then the cleanup crew is making sure that people don't know that <clears throat> you know god is dead and the aliens made us i guess uh, and so it kind of fits into that aspect of it in terms of well they're making sure that these people's you know memories are are still fuzzy and it could be that there's a handful of rogue aliens up there that are trying to force disclosure because they want to see how human beings react to that particular revelation maybe they're chaos agents we don't know you know and this is just, I, but i the, or it could be a directive to disclose and that's why the cleanup crew has to keep showing up and keep doing the the we're gonna mess with your memory thing yeah uh it, it seems like the interrogation is is uh, pretty uh pretty in- integral to this entire my lab situation they it's like the, these are pretty ordinary people that are getting abducted and during the interrogation they are constantly quizzing these people about uh describing the alien technology um describe their propulsion system their mechanism for for uh, getting from place a, a point a to point b like you know how how is a how is a housewife from oklahoma from 1990 going to really articulate what kind of energy source or propulsion system that the aliens are using unless directly informed by the aliens that they're using like a quantum singularity drive you know something like that um and all by the way all these these uh these interrogations pretty much take place like in a in a hangar next to a ufo like craft by and large in a cubicle like room inside a larger underground room or cavern um, they are the the people that are abducted are often drugged uh, to get the uh, the response that they want, and then they're berated by the the people who are interrogated over and over again. They're berated, asking questions about uh, what are these aliens? What do you know about them? And then afterwards, they're brainwashed so they won't remember the entire thing, or they just remember little elements of it, not enough to really pinpoint anything, and maybe not enough to really focus on throughout your day to day. Well, not enough to establish credibility. Sure, I think is the the overarching goal on that end. Yeah, and the the experiments are uh, that they that they do uh, perform on uh, these people um, 
pretty interesting. So when it comes to the experiments, uh, liquid breathing, uh, kind of like that scene in the abyss, the James Cameron movie, where they uh, they had that that uh, pinkish kind of liquid that they would put inside so they could they could breathe at at uh, higher pressures under the sea. Well, they're doing that. Uh, they're doing that kind of experiment on people, live test subjects, and the reason why they're they're thinking that they're that they want to experiment on living people, not just animals, is well, they've got to figure out how long someone can use this stuff uh, before they are uh, killed or driven mad by it. Uh, so this would be useful for Navy intelligence purposes for uh, submarine escapes or underwater sea support facilities. It's also alleged that alien abductees, uh, such as Betty Anderson, um, they uh, have been uh, they they have reported have uh, being placed inside a tube filled with a liquid to compensate for large gravity forces during UFO accelerations. So I guess putting yourself surrounded by liquid uh, will help offset some of the powerful G forces exerted by UFOs that are traveling. So interesting is, theory. Is there a correlation with studies on something like that being conducted in you know military research center or Cal Poly or something like that? It's it's probably documented in this book. Uh, I didn't pull out the uh, the footnote, but I can go back and try to try to get it because that's an interesting little piece of uh, I don't know. It's this very curiosity. It's like do, will like submersing submerging uh, submersing yourself in liquid offset those g-forces a little bit so well okay, they're not acting so on your body it's acting on a liquid go underwater and fire a bullet yeah i mean it it the uh, water certainly does do a lot to displace trajectory on that sure you know so i guess you could theorize that different forces and different gravitational pushes and pulls would have you know, based on water or viscosity of whatever liquid it is that's inside of it, or, you know, that I, I don't know. I mean, it's plausible. It sounds reasonable. Um, they're also doing electromagnetic experiments uh, in which they uh, try to produce mystical and out of body experiences by st uh, stimulating the temporal lobes. Uh, they also use uh, extremely low frequencies, uh, elf waves. Um, and they, they, they learned some of the, some about the, uh, of these elf waves from the Russians and what the Soviets were, were doing, uh, doing at the time back during the, uh, the early parts of the cold war, 1950s and sixties. And, um, according to the air force, like if you want to cause depression, you shoot a wave at 6.6 .6 Hertz that causes depression, depression, uh, 7.83 Hertz makes a person start to feel good. 10.8 hertz causes riot-like behavior. So you can really control crowds like this. You can uh, uplift the mood of a population or make them feel anxiety, make them feel bad, depressed, uh, all that kind of stuff. And they, uh, they mentioned HARP. And I got that information from someone sent me this book, A Mass Control, uh, Engineering Human Consciousness by Jim Keith. So thank you, whoever sent me this book. Um, I appreciate that. You should next time if you guys send me books, put like a little uh, card in the book so I I don't forget who sent it to me. I've had that happen a couple of times too, and I was bummed I didn't know who to thank. I just got sent a graphic novel that details the story of Operation Ajax, the overthrow of the Iranian government in 1984. Oh, that's fantastic. Or 54, sorry, 54. But yeah, full on graphic novel. It's awesome. Um. And the last thing that they do is the implants. So you, everyone's sort of alien implants. Well, the my labs have their own version that they're testing these implants for tracking, control, and communication, uh, computer human interface, and also a life extension that uh, they believe they the the, the scientists uh, the, who are performing this they believe that uh, human consciousness might be able to be transplanted outside the human body. Uh, with a computer-like Christoskeleton polymer with living cells. Sounds bizarre, but they're trying to do this kind of stuff. Um, and I, I think this is completely like, this stuff is in the realm of possibility. Once you take into account that this stuff really started to pick up 
after Project Paperclip, after we got a good chunk of Nazi scientists and doctors rolled like parts of the Nazi intelligence apparatus into like the OSS CIA and then rolled them the, some of the scientists into obviously NASA and then the mind control people into the CIA. They need test subjects and Nazis were used to testing on living humans. And uh, they said, well, if you want us to continue our research, you got to give us something. And so uh, I think that may have spawned a good chunk of these. They offer uh, the my labs offer a number of different benefits to clandestine governmental operations. And as for why they want to keep this so secret uh, and maybe just blame everything on aliens as of uh, recently, like with the UAPs, if they dig down even further and find out that even 10% of the my lab stuff is true, that is catastrophic to the credibility of, of whatever kind of secret they were trying to keep for the benefit of mankind, you know, it goes out the window. Well, yeah, yeah, and I be it, it's not as if the CIA hasn't already given reason after reason after reason to nullify its existence in the first place. Although it is interesting, again, not not to to you know spend too much time on the Jimmy Carter thing. Although this is the first time I'm, I'm looking at it, so it's fresh in my head, and I'm still kind of stunned by it. it if you're the CIA. And you have a venture capital fund called NQTEL, for example, and you're the sole organization or, or the organization that is, uh, dealing with the direct knowledge about the, I guess, you know, aliens made us and all of that stuff. It would be. I, I mean, just exponentially beneficial for you, your hedge fund, your ability to influence, you know, culture, all of these things to just be sitting on that as the, you know, primary organization with that information. So, I mean, again, so a lot of this does sort of dovetail with that, especially where all of the mind control, control stuff comes from and all of the human experimentation. Yeah. It, uh, it sounds wacky, but is it is it any more wacky to believe that the military could be do, doing this or aliens could be doing this? I guess it's like people who don't want to believe. Like it, these are just crazy people making it up. Um, but people uh, who've had these experiences uh, and really stick with them, they put their entire credibility on the line, their life. And uh, there, there's a recent story about this guy from Texas who went on the record about being abducted by aliens. And his entire family ridiculed him. His entire town that he lived in ridiculed him. It caused him so much anxiety and depression that he turned into an alcoholic and became homeless. And now his son, because of all the recent revelations in the news about UFOs and UAPs, he, now he's going, well, maybe I shouldn't have made fun of my pa like that. Well, no shit. He went through something um, and he was just trying to express what he was uh, feeling and what he was trying to convey happened to him, and now he's uh, out on the streets. Well, hopefully, he's not in the streets anymore because maybe his son feels bad enough. Um, but I doubt he's making it up. He went through something, um, and it, it, it was powerful enough to where he was real, willing to risk his entire reputation to put it on the line. So, well, and if that's the only way that you can process it, if you don't have any framework outside of that and you're telling people what happened, then, you know, I mean, obviously this went one way for him initially. But if you're if you're at least trying to be a supportive family member, you go, OK, look, pop, that sounds nuts. But based on what you've told me something weird happened so let's at least try to figure out what that is and i'm here for you however you need me to be but let's let's find out what's going on okay buddy me and you as a team let's get at it I don't know. if my dad told me that i'd say something like this <laughs> man you are one pathetic loser <laughs> yeah that'd make him yeah you know, just joking around dad it's okay we'll figure out we'll get to the bottom of this together Right, Dad lets me and you go out to the garage and have a blunt and a talk yeah. up. Let's just forget this whole thing happened, okay? <laughs> we got some, we got some fields to plow here. But uh, that's what I got on my labs. Uh, just an alternate uh, perspective on, I guess, uh, the alien abduction 
and reason for secrecy, I suppose, because it might not just be that they're hiding earth shattering technology that could change economies, but maybe they're also hiding the fact that uh, they're kidnapping people, abducting people on a continual basis for information gathering and experimentation, <laughs> which um, you might be able to forgive hiding the technology, kidnapping your own uh, citizens. That's going to be a tougher one to get past. So. Yeah, I either way, I do think that that uh, we all need to and we all deserve that you know find out the truth on this. That that having a complete picture of how the world works puts you in a much better position, ethically, get much better position. Yeah, you know, all around. Yeah, yeah, it does. Um, well, let's get off UFOs for a little bit and let's talk about some other uh, very important events around the world. What do you say? Absolutely. Let's do it. Well, let's uh, let's talk about uh, what's going on at the White House. This is a big story. This is a huge story. They found some very particular types of substance or substance at the White House. I'll bring this up on screen so people can watch this at uh, at home. And uh, this is our dear president. I, I just hope that this is one big misunderstanding. But uh, we'll find out here. I'll bring this up on screen. Here we go. I'll play this. We turn on my live leveler. Here we go. So we get it nice and loud out there for everyone. Here we go. After somebody found cocaine at the White House, a source just told NBC News that the official lab test came back positive for the illegal drug. They say it was discovered on Sunday inside a small dime-sized bag. President Biden was not at the White House at the time, but emergency crews did briefly evacuate the building. NBC News White House correspondent Mike Memoli joins us now. Mike, we know that we're told cocaine was found actually in the West Wing. Who has access to that area? And even though there's so many questions still, does Secret Service have? any idea about who actually might have brought it in? Me. Well, Morgan, unlike the executive mansion of the White House, which you see behind me, that's where some of the ceremonial uh, spaces of the White House that we're so familiar with, as well as the private residence of the president is located, that we understand that this was discovered in a area of the West Wing, which is really typically only open to the high level staff who work there, as well as potentially some of their guests. Now, to recap, this was discovered by an officer in the uniform dis- division of the Secret Sur- Service as part of a regular and routine search of the area on Sunday evening. Uh, We know, though, that there are often guests of some of those White House staff who are given private tours of the West Wing over the course of the weekend. And so because this was a common area, a place where individuals who come uh, into the West Wing might be asked to leave their personal belongings like a cell phone or what things that were in their wallet before they go into uh, deeper into the West Wing, it may be easy to track down who it was by looking at things like visitor logs or uh, the uh, the, uh, video cameras that are uh, of that space. Space, but uh, it, it is still an early stage of this investigation. The Secret Service only today confirming that this was, in fact, cocaine that was discovered there. Morgan. What is the White House saying to all of this, Mike? Well, of course, we learned of this yesterday uh, on the 4th of July, July holiday, so we'll get our first on-camera public reaction from the White House when Karine Jean-Pierre, the White House press secretary, briefs this afternoon. There is certainly an interest on the part of the White House to mm-hmm. very quickly address this and try to determine who this was, because this is a highly unusual and potentially embarrassing situation. Potentially. Uh, the West Wing is the heart, the working heart of the government, uh, of the presidency, uh, where the president's office is, where the vice president's <laughs> office are, the most on, senior no. officials. And so because it's a more restricted area, one with much more limited access, uh, there is going to be a lot of attention ultimately on whether they can determine uh, who this is. And the White House will be quick to want to get this behind them. All right. NBC News White House correspondent Mike Memoli joining us live from D.C. Mike, thank you. Anybody have any white? Do you begin have any with that deadly? Stuff? There you go. Uh, wh- I love this so much. Cocaine at the White House. Now, they're trying to say... It could have been one of the visitors since it was uh, open to the public at certain periods of time. But come on, Steve, what do you think? Look, Mike, it's a common area. The White House, people come and go all the time. It's where they drop off their belongings. They may have a backpack or a cell phone or 
A dime a bag of coke. Blow, <laughs> you know, I mean, it's just one of those things. So I, this is hilarious. And I mean, look, everybody's already made all the Hunter Biden jokes and all that kind of stuff. But I, it, it's Washington, D.C. Now, Mike, I have lived in, around the Beltway before. I, I have had friends that bartended inside in D.C. Uh, had a good friend who was the lead bartender at a place called McCormick and Schmicks on 16th and K, which is where all the lobbyists hang out. And uh, I'm I'm going to tell you, there's a lot of cocaine in Washington, D.C. each and every day, my friend. I, this I, is not I a can... surprise. The, them acting like it's a surprise or a shock or a rarity is the funniest part of that whole segment. What I'm shocked at is someone would forget their coke. And I mean, that is the thing. It, usually if you're doing coke, you know where your coke's at. Mm. And That's a fair point. And the only the only time where you don't care about your Coke is when you have many bags of Coke. And so I would say that this is a person, this isn't a one-off kind of thing, like someone bought like a little bag of Coke to do while they're taking a tour of the White House when they're on vacation from Nebraska. You know, honey, uh, let's go to Washington, D.C., get a little Coke and, you know, tour the, the you know, the, uh, the Capitol. No. This is someone who likes to do coke, likes to do it a lot, and has enough of it around that they forgot that they left it there at that place. And they probably didn't even realize it was gone because they have so many other coke bags. It's like they can't, they can't keep up with them all. That is an absolutely fair point, although I would suggest that there's a, probably a private Roger Clinton tour. No, that you could take probably uh that is just full of cocaine um the, and then then there's another reason that you're comfortable with losing a bag of cocaine and that's if you feel like it's either ditch the bag of cocaine or spend the weekend in jail mm. for possession that is true yeah i'm very proud of my son okay he's proud of his son uh, well, Joe Biden did come out and say just some very interesting things about this. And thankfully, he left a voicemail here on this show uh, to give everyone an update on what's going on here. Greetings, people of Earth. Uh, this is President Joe Biden. I know, I know. Come on, man. People think that Coke was my son's. It's not. It's mine. I bought it in Scranton, Pennsylvania. I like to put the cocaine on my, my penis and have my son snort it off. The old penis popper. It's good fun. Uh, I learned that from Mikhail Gorbachev. Uh, it's, it's our little father-son game. It's harmless fun, really. Remember, God save the queen. All we are taught. Okay, show all. Very interesting things you're saying. I'm not going to be dishonest. I'm not understanding what you're saying. You know, there's Joe Biden there. Incredible statements right there. That that is uh, that bold, bold, <laughs> bold, very bold. It, it's a he should run on that platform. Uh, really, uh, he should. Joe uh, Biden, penis poppers, 2024. I, you know what? He does need something to run on for his next campaign, and nothing's going to seem more hip and with it if he has a little coke habit, you know? Well, and it can't be his record, so it's got to be yeah. something. I would say to say he, Joe Biden, he is the EDM president. You know, he likes to do poppers. He likes to do coke. He likes to have fun. He likes to rave. I want to see President uh, Biden in some Janko raver pants, and that yes. will get my vote. Yes, twirling glow sticks. <laughs> I'm going to see President Joe Biden at a rave with glow sticks and one of those pacifiers <laughs> doing key bumps in the bathroom. A little stuffed animal hanging off of a chain <laughs> wallet. Yes. I want it, I want him dressed to the nines in raver gear. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> but, yeah, how are they... Uh, I'm, uh, I don't know. So there should have been a press conference already, and this should have been brought up. Let's see if I can find it real quick. I'd love to see what they say about this. Oh, absolutely. I don't know if you can find it over there real quick. Uh, I'm going to take a look. Take a look because this is a uh, State Department cancels meeting. Um, let's see. Cocaine found in the White House. Is there an update on this? Uh, So I've got... Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> got a couple of things. The uh, the Twitter account RNC Research is a veritable gold mine for this stuff. Oh, okay. Uh, let's see. Here is the cocaine question. And I'm going to uh, DM you on Twitter with this. Okay. You cool? Yeah. Perfect. I can play uh, it right over here. Okay. Let's see. Let's do that. Um, my uh, my laptop is acting a little bit slow this week. There's Mike. Excellent. All right. There we are. Uh, and then there are uh, additional posts that go into the ongoing investigation. A couple of sound bites of that. Okay. Well, let's see what she has to say because I'm sure she'll be honest and tell us exactly what we need to know. To clarify for us, where exactly inside the West Wing the substance was discovered? I'm not going to get into uh, specifics. All I can say is when people visit the West Wing, uh, there is the the area of the West Wing where uh, it is highly uh, traveled. uh, And that is what happens. People come through this particular area. It's highly traveled. I'm just not going to get into specifics. I'm not going to get into uh, uh, not going to get ahead of the Secret Service, and so I'll let them speak to that. There are a couple of primary entrances into the West Wing. There's the one with which we're all familiar, right outside uh, the driveway where the Marine stands when the President's in, in the West Wing, and there's another entrance uh, off West Executive Avenue. Can you explain which which entrance we're talking I'm about? I'm going to let the Secret Service speak to that. Uh, can you explain why you, you can't explain it? I mean, you, you described it as a heavily traveled area. Can you explain why you secret, can't explain? I'm just saying what the Secret Service uh, said. We got this from the Secret Service, so I'm sharing a little bit more with you oh, really? uh, from here. But again, it's under their purview. It's under investigation. They will they will have more specifics down the road uh, as they are uh, looking into this. We are confident that they will get to the bottom of this, and so I'm just going to leave it to them. The substance was discovered late on Sunday. Who discovered it? What's the latest staff-led tours that happened? And the yeah. West Wing on a Sunday. You know, I don't have Fair the specific question. on how late the te- the staff tours, uh, staff led tours go, uh, mm. but I can tell you that there was one on Friday, there was one on Saturday, there was on one on Sunday. The times that there are not any West Wing tours is when there is a federal holiday, like yesterday, or a big a White House, a large White House event. I just don't have the specifics. Let's let's let the Secret Service get to the bottom of this. They'll oh. have more, hopefully, more information, and uh, we have confidence that they uh, will be able to uh, figure this all out. So, going to give them the space to do that. I don't know. I'm not very confident they're going to figure it out. I I am 100% confident that when they do figure it out and the people in that room ask good old Kareem Jean-Claude Van Pierre, uh, that she will go, the Secret Service has made a statement on that. I would refer you to it. I don't have anything further to add. I'm, uh, I'm going to make a bet. This cocaine was found in the Oval Office. <laughs> And that it was probably found on the president's desk because, like, hypothetically, if it was, like, Hunter Biden, he can say, I snorted coke off the president's desk. Like, that's, like, something, and he probably would have a picture of that because he likes to take pictures of everything. Like, it's yes. it's like a scavenger hunt for him, <laughs> you know? Um, and it, even if it was, like, a tour group. Where's I, Waldo for crackheads? I'm yeah. sorry. That's beautiful. Like, e- even if it was, like, a tour group to say you did coke off the president's desk, that's a, that's something. That's a story you can use for the rest of your life. That will get... You tell that at a job interview, you're going to get hired. You can make challenge coins. Oh, you absolutely. can have an entire club for stuff like that. Where you did the cocaine, who you did the cocaine off of, or where you did all that yeah. kind of stuff. Like, yeah. Balls. Balls. Oh, yeah, you did, you did my balls? I did them off the White House desk. Beat that. You can't. Right? That's, that no. trumps everything. And uh, I, I, I saw a lot of people uh, like online trying to blame this on uh, Trump and his sons. Huh. But you'd imagine, like it's been a few years, and that this cocaine, if it really was one of Trump's sons or even Trump, uh, they would have found the coke already. They like this. This would have been the first thing that they laid blame on President Trump. It's like, by the way, we found your your son's coke, and we're going to arrest you for it. But no, there are honestly people halfway through twenty twenty three that are making the the contention that the Secret Service found Don Junior's blow. Yes, like I saw yesterday. That. It was on Reddit. Yeah, people were like a whole bunch of people when this story broke. 
they are blaming Don Jr. for this. Y'all need Jesus. Yeah. Anybody have any white? Do you have any white stuff? Uh, he's looking for white stuff right there. So, I mean, that is just... It, I, I, who would have thought, like, this, this, this story really came out of left field. And... No, I, I, it really is important to find out who discovered this, because you'd imagine this probably this probably would have been brushed under the rug, no pun intended. But this came out. Why did it come out? Uh, unless they're trying to really torpedo Joe. Well, that is an excellent point, and I think that that you're right. I don't know if we, I, I think we've had this you know, a little bit of this discussion on, on the morning show, but the possibility of, and there's a lot of people that have been, for whatever reason, kind of giving it legitimacy, the implementation of Gavin Newsom. I apologize for the little dirt bike going by on the highway there. Um the possibility of Gavin Newsom warming his way into the I'm the elected Democrat in 2024 spot. Yeah. He looks like he looks presidential. And uh, it's the only reason why he's been going across the country, speaking about every state but his own, pretty much. Uh, they want him in there. And to be honest, he does talk and look more presidential. He would, like, if it was just a, a regular old primary. Gavin versus Biden. Gavin's going to win hands down, no problem. Like he's the guy who's just with it. He's you might not like him, but he's sharp, and that he he knows the issues. You might not like his policies, but he he seems to be coherent, and he's not a bumbling moron. So he's got that sincere whisper voice. He does that lets you know that he deeply cares. He he's he's presidential material. He was he really is, and they've got to do something about uh, old Bobby Kennedy. Yeah, you got to get him out of the way. I mean, they can't they can't put Biden up against you know super jacked yoke RFK Jr. No, uh, Gavin Newsom. He's one of those people that was was bred in one of those MyLab vats. You know, he he is a he's like a clone, a super not like they have super soldiers. This guy's a super genetically altered politician from from the aliens. Like he's like that perfect. He's a uh, 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 legacy politician. Nancy Pelosi's a relative. He married into Jerry Brown's family with his first wife, I believe. Uh, there was, I mean, he is, he has been, I lab cultured made for this role. Oh, yeah. the, it, his hairline is presidential. His teeth are presidential. He knows how to wear a pullover and he knows how to wear a tuxedo. Like all of the boxes, as far as the American electorate are checked, he can, he can, he can pick out a wine for you that you'll never forget. Yeah. When is the last time we've had a president that cultured? It's been a long time. Um, I can't remember. Reagan, maybe, 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 maybe. Uh, do you want to hear yeah. some audio clips of uh, Joe Biden and uh, like a president, uh, a July the Fourth uh, Independence Day celebration? Oh, my goodness, yes. Okay, let's listen to a little bit of our president, our dear president. Uh, while he just kind of wanders around and slurs his way through some speeches. Because uh, it's fun. And then we'll move on to some other topics and uh, maybe even open the phone lines. We'll, we'll see. But here's, uh, this comes from Blacklisted News. They do some good stuff. I'll just uh, play this right here while I bring it up on screen. America goes. Go get him. Get me off the stage, you're afraid I'm gonna try to sing, Richard. Thanks a lot, guys. Appreciate it. This is one, he's just doing, and then he has this, he stutters and stammers a bit. Says the preschool for three and four year olds, so they get the classrooms mm -hmm. ready to learn. And by the way, recent studies have indicated. That if you start school, not 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 day daycare, school at three years old, school. no matter what your background is, no matter what home you come from, 
you have an incredible opportunity. You all know the, all, the, all the data and statistics. Access to preschool for three and four. I don't know. I don't think I do know all the data and statistics. I'm going to be honest with you, Joe. <laughs> I don't think I know the data. Look at your child. You'll have your son on puberty blockers by the time you're five. <laughs> you start young enough. Uh, and in this one, he says, go to anyway. And by the way, the program is still there. Go to anyway. You ought to contact us to make sure you know exactly how to qualify. Okay. Go to anyway. Your child. All right. Uh, they're not somebody else's children. They're all our children. They're probably, but children are the kite strings. They're not somebody else's they're children. They're all our children. Are the kite strings that lift our national ambitions aloft. And you hold those strings. You hold those strings. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, boy. That's not how a kite works, Joe. Yeah. I, I don't know. I guess he's doing the best he can. Like I, I'm still back in the uh, that he needs to become a raver in order to really he needs to embrace his inner raver that we know he has. So that's the only oh. way he's going to win. It's there. It's yeah. there. Lean into it, Joey. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, boy. Well, we'll transition out of here. We'll cover some uh, some more headlines here. Yes. Uh, let's see here. So much, so much here. Um, I'm going to cover this one because this is a, a little a little wacky. And then I'll, I'll open the phone lines after this one right here. But this is a little wacky here. And this is a, a man finds snake in bag of broccoli from the supermarket. That's some good news on that front. Sounds like a free snake to me. What's this guy complaining about? Uh, a, a grandfather from England made a surprising discovery after buying vegetables from Audi. Uh, we've heard of people finding small frogs and caterpillars inside bags of salad before, but this is the first time we've ever heard of someone finding a live snake inside something they bought from a supermarket. The 63-year-old Nelville, uh, 63-year-old Nelville Linton had purchased the broccoli from a branch of Audi in the West Midlands and had taken it out of the fridge a few days later when he noticed something inside that bag. Uh, upon closer inspection, inspection, it turned out to be a snake. The goblin. It was, a pretty, fr it was pretty frightening, he says. I'm not good with snakes. It's lucky I didn't uh, just leave the broccoli out in the kitchen or it would have been loose in the house. That would have been a huge risk for us because we have two vulnerable people living here. Well, how big is this fucking snake, dude? What kind of snake <laughs> was it? Is it the rare broccoli eating copperhead of the West Midlands? He, he, he probably thinks every snake is venomous and will devour a person. And it's like, how big is that bag of broccoli? Is your broccoli bag six foot tall by three foot like it like it was holding some sort of anaconda in there it's like come on guy i mean dude, maybe it was the deadly egyptian asp i don't know look i will say this though we were walking right down the street just to go watch some music the other day or go to the creek the other day and there was a baby rattlesnake that had been like ran over but oh. I mean, just you know, but it was there's baby rattlers just hanging out down on the hot rocks on the creek. No, well, that I can imagine in England. Yeah, I mean, this is probably this a small little gardener snake, about maybe a foot. It's probably a foot long. I'm guessing two feet at the most. He goes on to say a local zoo later identified the reptile as a ladder snake, a species native to parts of uh, southern Europe. That is non-venomous, but can still offer a nasty bite. We are investigating this isolated incident and have apologized to Mr. Linden for the uh, for our unusual high standards that were not met. The supermarket state stated, "Oh boy, this sounds like a lawsuit. This is kind of like when they used to find like uh, didn't someone find like a finger or a toe in a can of Coke or something like that, and yeah. they sued." I get, yeah, these people are going to get sued. Sue everybody. I mean, now Aldi can be like, <laughs> our store is one hundred percent snake free. It's snake free. Trust us. We kill every snake that comes into close contact to the store. <laughs> uh, 
Farm um, broccoli has been safety inspected for ladder snakes and pesticides. I'm just surprised they didn't in the story say actually how big the snake was. So ladder snake. Uh, I'm gonna look up a uh, ladder snake on the on the internet and see what it is. So ladder snake. Whoa. Let's see. I'm going to Wikipedia. What's the size? Right. Behavior breeding. Uh, let's see here. All they can carry up to uh, 15 eggs. That's very, very. It's too many eggs. Um, it is. Let's see here. At the age of five, they can reach uh, 20 inches in length. Wow, that's feet. big. It's pretty big. They reach uh, sexual maturity at age five. So how old was this snake? Was it sexually mature? <laughs> they put a sexually mature snake in my bag of broccoli. How dare they? Right. Well, okay, so I'm seeing that the ladder snake... Uh, is a medium-sized snake which reaches a maximum total length, including tail, of around 63 inches, but oh. which averages 47 inches, so just under four feet. But that's a li how big is your bag of broccoli Fish. if it's got if it's got a a, a four foot snake in it? Yeah, exactly. You you bought the heaviest bag of broccoli. <laughs> it's like it's like it's, you're struggling to pick it up. You you would notice a difference in in weight there. I'm imagining. And be like, wow, this bag of broccoli is really heavy and it's moving. <laughs> uh, it didn't phase this guy. It didn't it didn't phase sixty three year old uh, Neville from England? He likes that kind of stuff. Neville shops high yeah. as a Georgia pine. Yeah, that's going to the store on your meds. Oh boy. Well, uh, I tell you what, I'm going to open up the phone lines here. We'll take a few phone calls if anyone dares to call in. And I got a lot more stories to get to. We're going to... We'll get to them all. We'll get to them all. This is just a, a goofy story. I guess they don't get a lot of snakes in England. That's they right. must not. Yeah. Certainly not in the West Midlands. Caller, you're on the air. Hello, hello. Hey, how's it going? What's good? Hey, what's up, Booberry? Uh, not a whole lot. Uh, just uh, tuning in on a Wednesday afternoon. Evening, I suppose. I feel like this cocaine story in the white house it's uh i feel like it's just a plant what do you mean like they it's there was no actual cocaine found uh i'm sure someone i'm yes i i would imagine that a physical cocaine was found but i just something about it says fed 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 <laughs> yeah like i was saying it, like they didn't have to report on this you, you'd imagine this is kind of the p part of the uh, Secret Service's job is to clean up this kind of stuff. Exactly. So I just particularly in the West Wing. Yeah. And um, yeah, I just something about it just screams like they're trying to build up more ammunition for some sort of Biden slash Hunter takedown combo. Yeah, uh, it does. It does feel that way. And uh, I really want to hear how uh, Joe Biden explains this away. And if, like obviously, um, that bag, that bag that contains the 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 cocaine, there's probably fingerprints. A show, I mean, that's a plastic bag. So, and a hundred, uh, I, I guess, fingerprints are on record right now because he's been arrested. So it should be pretty easy to identify if it was his or not, right? Mm hmm. Well, yeah. I want to know if it, if it was like a little zip bag. Are they talking like the cellophane off of a cigarette pack? What kind of bag are we talking here, people? Yeah, we're going to need pictures. I, <laughs> I, I agree, because if it was like a cellophane, cellophane from a cigarette, that's like that's something you get at a bar. You're at a bar, you're like, here, give me a little bit here, boom, cellophane's yeah, fine. And is it mostly like baby aspirin, laxative type shit, or is it like the real clean, non-cut type shit? Yeah, if it's pure... You know that's that's White House stuff because if, uh, if so there was an article that we looked at on the show that said tested positive for cocaine hydrochloride and then went on to say that cocaine hydrochloride is used as an uh, strong anesthetic or something like that. Mm, so medicinal grade cocaine, yeah, mm. that good, good. That that's uh, that's some true rocket fuel. <laughs> no, he maybe he could say like if it was Hunter Biden, he was 
taking cocaine for his long COVID. That's yeah, like this is like a new a new type of therapy. Well, it's, you know, I, I think the 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 threads definitely exist there because there were uh, articles coming out that methamphetamine was uh, effective against COVID. Oh, really? I know yeah. uh, we read nicotine was uh, going around, so meth was good for it, too. That's great. Mm-hmm. COVID. There were a couple of studies, uh, one out of University of Chicago, that said that uh, particular a particular cannabinoid uh, in THC was effective at fighting off COVID. Hmm. All right. Uh, basically, drugs are good for COVID. Yes. Yeah. Apparently. Get wrecked. Stay healthy. Yeah. Uh, so good. Um, there was one last quick thing. I'm putting an all call out there for any musicians that have recorded music. You want to fuck around and find out. Uh, I'm on the hunt for people that are wanting to self-host their music and uh, get it onto a V for V platform. Um, there's a lot of new tools that we've been playing around with, and they're incredibly exciting. So if there's uh, people that want to learn more, just find me in the Discord. Uh, you can shoot me an email, uh, boo.berrymothman at protonmail.com. Uh, I'll definitely help you out every I'll step talk, of the way. I'll talk to my wife. Uh, she just now released their EP like in full, so uh, I'll see if they want to release it that way. And, uh, and uh, yeah, maybe a, a good experiment. Yeah, it'll be cool, man. We're able to basically live switch the music tracks That's live cool. in the app. So it's a it's a fun time to be playing around with stuff. Well, cool. Hey, uh, thanks, Blue Barry. We'll, we'll give it a shot. Yep. Have a good one, y'all. All right, bye. All right, probably prank caller. Caller, yeah. you are on the air. Hi. Hi. Hello. <laughs> so I got an idea. I don't know what you guys think of it. To go on LinkedIn, you can search WEF, you can search uh, ESG, all these things pop up under these people's taglines. They really want you to know that that's what they're into. And uh, just kind of calling them out. Are you working in a pet shop right these... now? No, a uh, movie studio. Oh, okay, okay. It kind of sounds like you're like working in like a pet store or something like that. You know, yeah, the WEF people... There's a lot of birds. They're really proud of their position in the world, and they like advertising it. I don't know. I mean, since I'm on LinkedIn, I don't know if I would feel comfortable going there and, and messaging them. Uh, that's my professional life out there. Uh, I don't know. Steve, what do you think? Sorry, I was they muted there. Well, okay. I said, are, are we talking about you're you're doing this on LinkedIn to them, saying, "Hey, look," I, or you're collecting information about who's affiliated with these organizations, and then on the show or in your own space, then talking about it and disclosing and things of that nature. Because I think that those people deserve to have a little bit more light shown on them. Um, I am open to dialogue and conversation with a handful of these goons, certainly, but, uh, I, you know, I, I don't know. So, I mean, what, what is your, what's the angle of approach on this for you, my friend? Well, I was thinking to sort of be a bit absurd, mm. sort of be like, Hey, I'm a communist too. I love, uh, eugenics and I think we should really push hard on you know, complete lockdowns because I want to be on your side and sort of so get them to lean agree into with it. absurd things. Yeah, le lean into the yeah. absurd. Yeah. So I, yeah, I'm a painter and I wanted to see, see if I could like do a portrait of the local ones and sort of like really lean into like maybe me be insane and have them agree with, oh, he's just a kooky artist and look what he's into and just draw out the worst in him. It seems like LinkedIn is so like uh, walled off. It's like you almost want to start like a, a Twitter hashtag, like support the WEF, and then actually produce dramatic artwork in support of them to start making it trend. Like I feel like if you do it like to them personally, inevitably they're going to block you. You're going to get harassed. You're going to get kicked off of LinkedIn because they're not stupid people. Um, I think it's starting some sort of trend online around supporting them and all the wonderful things that they have planned for us is the way to go. 
Hey, personally, if you want to yeah, yeah, yeah. mess with him, just, go ahead. I'm, I'm not going to do it. I can't do it. I'm if gonna... you wanted to bring some <laughs> no, absurdity I mean... to it, you could try the tree. You could try to get that's weft up trending, but then your take on it is that a, a weft up future is the future that we want. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they also or post something all their in that Instagram, direction. all their sort of bullshit, all of it. So they kind of leave themselves out there. There are a lot of uh, sort of up and coming uh, tyrannical losers. Yeah, um, they're they're very so. they're very proud of their. See, policies. Like, I see you. I know what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's almost like uh, they know that this planet is and was created by aliens and all major religions were constructed by aliens. So they're not beholden to any moral code. So they have joined a cult and, uh, that's the, that's their religion. Yeah. That resonates. Yeah. All right, man. Hey, thanks for calling in. All right, blow me up. All right. Bye. Your phone's bad. That yeah. was a solid encapsulation. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> One last caller here. Here we go. Caller, you're on the air. Oh, nice. Hello. Shabla Goo. Shabla Goo. Who are we everyone. talking to? Scarlett from Southern California. Scarlett, how are you doing? Doing well. Um, I just want to give a shout out to everyone. You know, uh, you, Mike, Joe, Pretched, um, and all, all the callers, all the guests, um, Charlie, uh, for helping me get through this tough time. I lost my dad last week on Tuesday. And just, you know, the first thing I, I did was just kind of put OBDM in the, in the background and fall asleep to it. You guys are just, you know, hilarious, awesome. Shout out. Always very cool. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to thank you guys for just having the air on and, you know, just being who you are. Well, hey, thank you for uh, those kind words. Sorry you lost your father. It's never easy to lose a loved one. And, uh, I, I mean, I, I don't know what we really provide other than maybe some momentary, you know, relief because you're not thinking about what you're going through. So, Hey, sorry, you're, you're going through that. Thanks for calling in. You have anything else you want to tell us? Yeah. I wanted to know how the, cause one of the, one of the last shows you guys were talking about was the air quality. Um, and I was wondering how the air quality is in Ohio after, like after the, uh, the whole train crash happened i haven't seen anything of it on the news so i just wanted oh, to know you know how, how things they forget they they forgot about east palestine a long time ago so the last i heard of east palestine this was about a month ago is that the residents were in conversations with the uh the train company to get a settlement now the air quality in relation to the train seems to have been resolved now the thing we are majorly concerned about is the environmental impact to the waterways, groundwater, the Ohio River, and then some of the surrounding farmlands of Ohio into Pennsylvania. Uh, the air quality right now is absolute crap, not because of the train, but mostly because of wildfires from the north. From what I'm being told by mainstream science, is uh, our air quality is really bad. And um, it, that, that does not seem to be going away anytime soon because in the uh, in Quebec they're choosing I think to let the fires just let them burn themselves out or be put out naturally by rain and so I think what we've been told is that we are going to have to just deal with this poor air quality for the rest of the summer all right yeah well yeah I hope it clears up Hope it, uh, you know, blows away and everything goes well on the uh, on the farm, on the homestead. Yeah, blow it so over to Washington, D.C. We don't need it around here. If, uh, if, I, could, if I could point you in a direction, uh, my, my good friend Ryan Christian, who has a, a show called The Last American Vagabond, just did a very thorough uh, hour and a half or more on a bunch of new information about very obvious... Uh, just horrendous, uh, what dioxins, uh, PFAD, number of other things that are be sh showing up in the water and the ground all over East Palestine. If you go to the last American vagabond.com, it should be, uh, right at the top or very close on the website. 
um, well worth the watch. It is it, ridiculously sourced. Yeah, Ryan does great work over there. I gotta, I gotta pay attention to his work. He does real work. We just goof around. Well, you guys are all right, but I'll check out. I'll check out the last bag bond. Um, thank you very much, and please blow me up. Hey, thank you for calling in. Take care. All right, bye bye. Yeah, I think uh, that East Palestine thing, you know, it, it's just not being covered anymore because it is a true environmental disaster and is going to impact uh, the water there. And then, I mean, the Ohio River goes down even to, all the way to the old Mississippi. It does. It does. And I mean, West Virginia has basically been where America tries to poison everything first. Yeah, uh, and it rubs right up against old West Virginia too. Yeah, that's why uh, that right there where Kentucky, West Virginia, and Ohio meet. That is the asshole of America, and uh, it's just nothing good really happens over there. It's just, you got the Kentucky goblins out there on the east side of Kentucky. You got right down there, Portsmouth, Ohio. Anybody ever been to Portsmouth, Ohio? Holy crap! I played a few shows down there once, and it is, it's like a different country down there. I'm telling you. Yeah, although I will say that that uh, yeah, the northwest corner of the state of Indiana, where it go, rubs up against Chicago, mm -hmm. where it's like Gary, Porter, Miller, all those places, just garbage. Absolutely I, garbage. I Valparaiso. Threw, oh, my God. I just, threw, I just drove through Gary, Indiana uh, for my brother's wedding. He got married in Chicago. And when you go into, when you start driving towards Gary, you smell Gary, Indiana, before you actually are in Gary, Indiana. It is so horrific. And everyone in there is so downtrodden, economically devastated. It's crazy. I, I, I honestly, I don't know how people continue to, to live there, but uh, they do. I guess there's been this whole big revitalization campaign. They've tried to to restore part. I don't know. It's but and then there's places like East St. Louis. Have you ever been through East St. Louis? Uh, no, not on purpose. In the Illinois, it's in Illinois town. It's right on the other side of the river, and it is. I mean, just it's. You know what it is? It's the Portsmouth of West Illinois. Yeah, it's like. There's so many, like, it is, it is tough. Like, you drive, there's some, like, economically downtrodden places all across, like, the Rust Belt here, Ohio, West Virginia. You got it out there in Indiana, just devastated. And it's, like, it's not really any fault of the people living there. They're doing the best that they can. Uh, it's, like, their home turf, and so they just continue to, to live there. But then you take in all these environmental like catastrophes and it, it it's not doing anything to help the community. They're going to pay off the people of East Palestine. Hopefully they are able to move away, but I suspect people will, that's the only home that they know. So they'll just continue to live there and drink poison water. I mean, people didn't leave Flint. People yeah. didn't leave New Orleans after Lord knows how many different environmental disasters happened in the wake of Katrina. Just the Superdome alone. Yeah. <laughs> I, the, yeah. So, I mean, people, you know, people put roots down because otherwise they think oh, I fall off the earth yeah. uh, and they stick around. Yeah. It's crazy. And I mean, it was, one of the coolest thing when I, when we played down in Portsmouth, Ohio, this is like in the early 2000s. And, you know, it's like a, it's not like a small town, but it's like a, a rundown kind of like industrial town. Kind of cool. Quasi hillbilly, quasi you know redneck. I remember playing at this bar, and they they do cruise in there. That, like what they do, like on Friday nights, is they get in their cars and they just drive around the block. They cruise, and it, traffic is at an absolute standstill there. At least it was, and they just cruise. It's just teenagers, young people. They hop in the car, travel like two miles an hour, and they just drive. For hours and hours and hours and cruise, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it's I mean that, that kind of thing happens all across the country, but it was kind of interesting to to see that down like that's what they're doing in Portsmouth. I wonder if they still my do. my hometown 
Ah, uh, sorry about the dogs here. My hometown had this, uh, I guess it was like a, a shopping center. It was called Applewood, and that's where everybody would cruise. The town that I was born in is a little lake town called Kindleville, Indiana, and <laughs> it's right next to Fort Wayne. And on Friday night, all the people from Fort Wayne would come to Kendallville and do exactly that. Cruise downtown cruise? at like two miles an hour. Do people Shout still cruise? People. They still cruise? I don't, they still cruise? I don't know. I don't know. I don't Is cruise know. still a thing? Hmm. They probably do it in the metaverse now. Yeah. Man, yeah, probably. All right. Uh, let's hit some more uh, headlines here. I'll bring this up on screen. And uh, here we go. I arrived at prom in a coffin, and I never wanted to fit in it. That's some good news on that front. Okay, she never wanted to fit in. So this person arrived to prom in a coffin. Now, this is the, what we're looking at here is, uh, by all accounts, a goth, a neo-goth. And she is, uh, she got like, uh, look, if she was, like, if she was in The Cure, you know, the band The Cure. And so uh, she really rose to the occasion. A British teenager has gone viral after she arrived at her school's prom in a coffin carried by both her brother and father before coming back to life on the red carpet. Huh. You know, my mother used to drop me off at the uh, Little League games in a coffin, so I, I understand what she was doing here. So Abby uh, Ricketts, 16, caused quite the stir at Trinity Academy when she rolled up in a black Volvo XC90 looking Drop dead gorgeous, dressed head to toe in black and black lace corset dress, lace tights and boots. After popping out of a coffin at the edge of the carpet, the family blasted the song Year Zero by a Swedish rock uh, group called Ghost. I know Ghost. Uh, Ricketts opens her eyes and rose from her coffin to much applause from the stunned crowd. Everyone was cheering and screaming and clapping because they thought you rose from the dead. They were happy you were resurrected. They thought you're gone. Uh, everyone was okay. Uh, the teen said she always wanted to stand out and never follow the crowd. Well, good for her. She's one of the few young people that doesn't want to follow the crowd. So I'm going to applaud her for this. Good for you. Okay. Uh, my, well done, Abby. Uh, my teacher said that it was amazing that they have never seen anything like it. It would it would go down in history, Anna Ricketts. I never wanted to fit in. I always wanted to be outside the box, put on bump, and outside the norm. Oh, well, good for her. I, I mean, this is a bit elaborate, but I guess she certainly knows how to make an entrance. You know, because yeah. considering everything, like you know, I, I, like ten years ago, I would ridicule this kind of thing, but I'm not because the fact that she's doing something different. When everyone else, like I, every other young person seems to be wanting to follow trends and join the school of fish and, and be part of normal society, she's, she's going against it. She's doing something a little different. So I applaud her for that. It takes some it's real guts to do this. It's fantastic. I look, and you're right, dude. Fifteen, ten years ago, whenever the the goth era like peaked and emo came and all that stuff, that was everybody's prom. Everybody wore black. Yeah. Everybody, yeah, you know, all that kind of stuff. What? But that's so far removed from what you, you know culturally these kids are being told and shown. That yeah, dude, that's fantastic. I'm I'm glad she. Uh, the horrible puns aside, yeah. um, I'm glad she went through with this. Yeah, the only th I mean, I, if it would have been better, she missed points here. It doesn't look like they brought her in a hearse. Yeah, I, that's the thing. You, you, if you're gonna do this, instead of renting the like the prom limo, rent the prom hearse. You got it. I think you got to go the distance here. You know, you know that there was a couple of towns away. Uh, a nice old fashioned style hearse that mm -hmm. was not being used that you could have been like, okay, look, you can drive. Okay. We're not asking to drive away in it. Just all you got to do is pull up at this time and then pull up at this time. And that's it. And look, there's, you know, an easy couple of bills in it for you. Yeah. You can advertise. 
Everyone wins. Everyone wins. Uh, her dad says, I was so proud uh, to do this for her, and it was a, an amazing thing to be a part of, gushed her father. We didn't think we would get the reaction that we got on social media. The younger Ritz, Ricketts posted her now viral entrance on TikTok, where it exploded with 1.9 million views. Several fans also echo how excited they were over her drop dead entrance. So yeah, good for her. Now what's she, now what's she going to do with this fame? Right, right. Parlay that into a uh, a career speaking as a motivational speaker. Here, here's the thing. Start. She she pigeonholed herself. Now people are going to want her to do this everywhere she goes. And now, like when she goes to pick up Starbucks or goes to a job interview, she's the coffin girl now. If she doesn't Ooh. be, if she doesn't arrive in a coffin, people are going to be disappointed. You know, I look if you if you're any kind of good salesperson, mm -hmm. you know when to withhold yeah, and when to push. Yeah, okay. right. So, so she may she may push, you know, once or twice more, but then withhold. And, and, you know, maybe focus on a different aspect of her creativity. Yeah. You don't want to play your hit song like the, on the, the first song of your set. Maybe you save it Not for a Not everybody later. can yeah. be James Brown, man. Yeah. You're right. Okay. All right. Well, we'll get some more headlines yeah. here. We'll figure it out. Uh, I'll do this one because this is kind of, uh, weird. Woman has epic meltdown over not real passenger on American Airlines flight. I'm getting the F off. Uh, that's good news. Okay. Uh, maybe I can play this. Uh, so a woman aboard American Airlines flight caused quite the scene when she caught was caught on camera freaking out and heading towards the exit over an apparent passenger. She said was not real. Oh, okay. It's all here. It's all going down. It's all happening. All right. The bizarre, expletive-laden meltdown went viral Monday, reportedly occurring as a flight was preparing to depart Dallas-Fort Worth International Airport. Uh, quote, I'm telling you, I'm getting the fuck off, and there's a reason why I'm getting the fuck off, and everyone can either believe it or they cannot believe it, the woman yells as she paced uh, to the front of the plane, according to the footage. Hmm. Let's see, do they have this footage? Let me see. I'm gonna see. I can play. I believe her. Uh, apparently, uh, someone's not real. So, uh, I'll I'll see if I can play this uh, this audio. I want to hear her say exactly everything that she is saying. Okay, because maybe in the context of her of her speech, it may make more sense. So. Music shouldn't have been playing that back. The music was coming from the New York Post. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> the New York Post is like, we're gonna actually. Uh, it. it actually worked. It, it was a little dramatic. Say what I mean. Come on. I'm telling you, I'm getting the fuck off, and there's a reason why I'm getting the fuck off. And everyone can either believe it or they cannot believe it. I don't give two fucks. But I'm because you're a real you man. Right now, that motherfucker. That motherfucker back there is not real. And this you can sit on this plane and you can fucking die with them or not. I'm not going to. That guy back there is not real. Okay, she points to the rear of the plane, prompting other passengers to turn around to get a glimpse of the source. I, I'm with them. I would have turned around. I was like, who the fuck back there is not real? I want to check this stuff out. You know, but Yeah. Uh, this stuff's real. Step one. <laughs> yeah. Maybe there's somebody back there that isn't, in fact, real. I kind of want to know. Clone? We talking about some hologram? 
I'm kind of with her right now. Um, she says, you can sit on this plane and you can die with them or not. I'm, I'm not going to do that. Uh, the footage was posted to TikTok. The original poster, according to the Daily Mail, said that the ordeal delayed the flight for roughly three hours as all passengers were forced to leave the plane before reporting. Did they have to check to see if all the passengers were real? Maybe that's what they had to do because, uh, is that, are you real? Like you have to give them the pinch test. You have to pinch every passenger to make sure that. Did human. they ask any of the passengers who got off the plane when it landed if the not real guy came back on? Yeah, that's it. Is this like a final destination kind of thing? They uh, made everybody get off. Now, that's that's suspicious. This seems like, like considering how many outbursts there are now on planes, they figured they would just would have blown it, let her get off, and then the flight can carry on as normal. Like, this is like pretty normal at this point. But no, they made everyone get off and get back on. So it says the, the person behind the account that posted the original video also claimed that the woman was not arrested following the outburst. Well, because she was, in fact, telling the truth. <laughs> they were like, uh, okay, so here's the deal, lady. We're going to let you go, but you're going to sign this NDA. Yeah. I mean, this is real. Um, so I, I'd like to have a follow-up with this person. But, yes. Huh. Hmm. I'm not against her. So, okay. All right. Yeah, I'm Aliens not. Aliens are real. It, it turns out she looks like exactly what her voice sounds like. Yeah. Uh, yeah you, but I think, even still, I, I would like to have a conversation with her. I think she was. Uh, did she go back and I, I, I swear I saw a, a, a guitar case. Like maybe. Maybe I'm. Not. I'm telling no. you, get the fuck off. No, she's not. She's not carrying a guitar case. Okay. Kind of with her now. No, that's a knockoff Gucci. I don't think that motherfucker back there was real. And I think she was onto something. So, okay. I concur. I'm with her. Okay. We'll move on. Uh, let's see here. Um, so I don't know if you follow movies or anything like that, but the, the Indiana Jones movie, uh, Dial of Destiny, is not doing very well. It's pretty much considered a stinkeroo at this point. And what they're really worried about, they thought they were going to have like a big opening weekend, and then July 4th would take them to like the, the box office numbers that they needed, but it ain't happening. Harrison Ford is not getting the job done. Disney, Lucasfilm, uh, really shit to bed on this one. Oh, right. But Wait, hang on. You're telling me that 80-year-old Harrison Ford doesn't have the draw that he used to? Exactly. He, uh, yeah, he, he's not, he doesn't have that, uh, that box office pull like he used to. But who does is a Mr. Tom Cruise. And this is who they're worried about. Tom Cruise. So the new Mission Impossible movie is the studio blockbuster of the summer with Tom Cruise back in a big way to save movie theaters once again. Hooray! You know, last year he did it with Top Gun 2, uh, which I think it got over a billion dollars in 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 uh, ticket theater sales, and which is a huge, huge accomplishment considering, you know, it was kind of coming out of the pandemic. No one was really going to the movies and Everyone was kind of fatigued with uh, all these big blockbusters, but Tom Cruise, he did it. Uh, Harrison Ford could not do it in 2023 with Indiana Jones 5, but it's looking like people are really pumping up Mission Impossible here. And it says, let's face it, uh, you kind of hate yourself for liking Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1. First of all, it's two hours and 43 minutes. Now you could, uh, you have flown to Miami or something. Okay, I'm not going to read this. This is like someone's blog about their experience with Mission Impossible. But um, it looks like that uh, the entire team is back. It has uh, Ving Rames is back. Simon Pegg is in there. And uh, I think Tom Cruise is going to make this movie another billion dollar movie. And it will only right. put the, it might put one of the final nails in the coffin for Disney. Just think about it. Like Tom Cruise, like this is like Mission Impossible 8. They can't even count how many movies they've done of Mission Impossible. And 
Tom Cruise is going to do a billion dollars, but a Disney Harrison Ford movie, Indiana Jones, is not going to do a billion dollars? Right. Well, how's the Marvel franchise doing? Though? Not good. Not now? very good at all. Like, they did kind of they did kind of overplay their hand there. They're not they're not doing very well. And uh I was a big Marvel guy up front, but I th I think what's really uh hurting them is all this uh ESG stuff. Um Disney signed on to it. Um we know that the the leadership over there is is fully on board. They don't have good writing, they don't have good direction, they don't have good leadership. And uh Tom Cruise, he's got good writing. He's a great leader. He's a he's a leading man, and people want to see the movies that he makes. And I think this could be like a if this makes a billion dollars, it's it's death nail for uh, for Disney. Pretty much, they're going well, to start selling is, stuff. That is one one uh, point on the board for Scientology. Yeah, it is. It certainly is. Because I don't think Harrison Ford not a Scientologist. Do, do Scientologists take vaccines? Interesting question. I bet uh, I bet they have a special set of temple garments that they wear whenever there's a pandemic and it prevents them from catching uh, any form uh, of illness. We didn't hear about high profile Scientologists getting the, the vid, did we? No, I don't think so. Um, yeah, I, I would I would underwear. I would like to know. Uh, I, and I don't know any Scientologists personally. I don't have anything against them. Um, in fact, I have a lot of respect for them and everything they do in Hollywood. <laughs> because apparently they still make good movies that people want to see. Uh, we'll, we'll know uh, Tom Cruise's full power if he's able to bring Will Smith's career back from the the, the dead. So Ooh. We'll see what Ooh, he can do. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see what yeah. he can do. I believe. I believe in the power of Tom Cruise. I think so. He's the uh, he's the hero America needs right now, and we'll see if he can get it done. So there's just a little entertainment news for you. We'll move on. What else we got? Let's see here, and uh, I'll get to one more story because I I touched on this, but I will uh, wrap things up with this UFO. This UFO story here. I'll bring this up on screen. So, son of alleged alien abductee regrets mocking his late father. Right. Fuck him. Uh, well, it's a little too late. I mean, your father's dead. You know? I mean, remember the good times when you used to mock him when he was alive, right? But right. no point in regretting this now, but he is. Uh, Daniel Rydell believes that he should have taken his father's stories about being abducted by aliens more seriously. When Rydell was growing up, uh, the subject of extraterrestrial visitation was very familiar to him. His father, Patrick McGuire, uh, had appeared on national television to discuss his alien abduction experiences and uh, had even warned his children about the possibility that they could be next. Well, you don't want to tell a kid that. That's going to give him nightmares. Uh, Tell us a different bedtime story, Dad. But uh, no, he didn't. Uh, at the time, McGuire had become something of a laughing stock in the community, and even his own two sons treated his claims uh, as the topic of amusement rather than something to be taken seriously. McGuire, who died back in 2009, claimed to have been abducted by num abducted numerous times by five foot hairless beings or star people and to have witnessed several of their spacecraft in the sky. He maintained that the strangeness had began, uh, begun when he discovered mutilated livestock on his farm and later observed several cows being beamed into the sky. It's uh, a busy neck of the woods old Pat lived in. Yeah. Uh, his claims were typically met with nothing but ridicule and uh, derision. Fast forward to the present, however, and now uh, Rydell has a chain has a change of heart, mostly due to the recent revelations about UAPs and the U.S. government's investigation into the phenomenon. Uh, "Quote: I'm the one who feels ashamed," he wrote. Uh, he sh uh, "How should we address our past mockery and ridicule if it turns out that hidden in the desert, uh, hi that hidden in a 
desert base somewhere, there are indeed craft cadavers in photographs of strange visitors. Well, you should feel pretty bad. And this is the power of group think, but uh, uh, I'd like to know more about yeah. his, uh, his. You you should feel like a total shit heel, fella. Really? Because it, it kind of it is like that summary didn't go into this guy was homeless on the street. Uh, he was an alcoholic. He, he really feel as though that uh, his entire community turned his back on him. Um, he said, so he said this. His uh, he claimed that the saga began after he finding mutilated cows on his farm, which uh, had their nose cut off, tongues cut out, and sex organs were removed as well. When a spaceship landed on his uh, Bostler Wyoming ranch, several other cows from his herd were also beamed into the sky. The year before, in an interview with uh, ABC, he claimed to have been visited by aliens somewhere around 25 to 30 times. Uh, Rado writes that a witness to some of the landings was quoted as seeing two or three spacecraft at separate times. So they come down in numbers. Uh, quote, we'd stay, uh, we stayed and watched the sun come up, and we saw two of them in the daylight hovering in two separate places. Uh, the televised claims made uh, him a pariah in his Wyoming town, but uh, Rydell said his father's hypnotic confessions were far from attention-seeking. So you see, he goes, from the earliest points of my childhood, I was told that UFOs were nothing to make light of, he recalls. His fathers would warn him, warn him and his brother that the star people could take them at any moment. Source of a nightmare for the youngsters for those years. Of course. You don't say. <laughs> Jesus Christ. You can't, you shouldn't be telling people that. Uh, no. you know, they can't do that. That's crazy. But all right. <laughs> it really is. That's wild. Why would you do that? But okay. Okay, uh, kids, everyone tucked in. All right. Now, look, stay vigilant because the star people could get you at any time. Daddy loves you. Good night. <laughs> That's right. Uh, uh, so in one incident uh, recounted by Rad Al McGuire, decline, uh, McGuire's decline saw him caught rifling through a classmate's garbage. When the classmates revealed the embarrassing moment the next day, the school erupted with laughter, inclu including from Rad Al himself. So, he was outcasted from the town, turned to alcoholism, and was reduced to rummaging through neighbor's garbage for food and everything because he lost everything. My God. That's, I mean, that's the power. The power of uh, being ridiculed after what he saw. My God. Sad. That's wild. That's crazy. Yeah. Man. Poor fella. That sucks. Uh, well, Steve, where can people find you? Well, uh, amwakeupshow.com, uh, and if, you, uh, if you're if you listening, you live in the Sonoma County area, we're doing monthly meetups, so if you click the button for the newsletter, you can find out the details for that. Uh, otherwise, uh, you can find me on Rockfin and Rumble, uh, AM Wake Up Show, Slow News Day, also all social media accounts uh, at Slow News Day Show. And thank you, my friend. This has been a lot of fun. Yeah, hey, thank you for joining me, man. Uh, I'm glad you finally came on OBDM. I'm sure I'll be back on AM Wake Up here sometime soon. Please do. Yeah. Uh, you can go to, uh, well, go to rbigdumbmouth.com. It looks like the our redirect OBDM pod.com is, uh, I don't know. I got I to gotta fix it. Something happened. So rbigdumbmouth.com. There are links in the description of this podcast to uh, support the show if you so choose or follow us on Twitter or Instagram. I think uh, Cratchit will be back on Saturday and we'll have more fun and excitement then, I think. And maybe Joe might be back in two weeks. We will see. He's a uh, he's going to get his cast off sometime soon. He's hopping around and uh we're thinking of them so i'm just I, I can't believe like every time i go on the internet there's some new ufo story or something like that it's crazy it's it's actually kind of overwhelming and i don't know if people are sick and tired of hearing about it <laughs> i don't know but um I, I i guess once all information is revealed i'll stop talking about it so. <laughs> 
I, I got to tell you before we split, you have got. I've got to put you together with Kurt Metzger because he just deep dived on the whole UFO thing, and he would have so much fun. Uh, and we need to get him on the union too. I would love to talk with him. I'll do it uh, off Showtime or whatever his schedule allows. I'd love to talk with Kurt about uh, UFOs. I just I'm s- I'm swimming in UFO books, and uh, I'd love to talk with him. Heck yeah. Yeah, we could definitely get him on the union. I'm trying to I'm trying to push uh, for like the, the next union of the unwanted is Monday. I have no idea what we're talking about, um, but I don't know. Maybe we'll talk about UFOs and strange creatures and stuff like that. But who knows? Who knows? And let's see here if I got any other things to get to. No, this no, I do not. Thank you, everyone, for hanging out. Thanks for Booberry calling in. You can check his uh, podcast out, Behind the Schemes. And, uh, yes, that's it. We're getting out of here, people. We'll see you on Saturday. Shabalagoo, everyone. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. You blew it! Now, here's a very oh, funny We're saying help immediately. That sucks, oh, man. Oh, look at that. Oh, man. Excuse me. <laughs> That's about all. Shablagu. Sit, Ubu, sit. Good dog. We're done! No. The show is over! Let me get your get supplies. Get the fuck out of here! Get the cleaning supplies. Suck my titties.